Today, we're going to talk about how to reconnect after marital conflict. If you're struggling to navigate your relationship and those fights or those arguments that you're having, and you feel like you're stuck in this unhealthy pattern, this episode is for you. You're going to learn simple ways to make those repairs that actually work and find ways to reconnect and stop those unhealthy patterns and cycles. You're not going to want to miss it because not only will it improve your marriage, but it will create greater fulfillment in your home life as well. Hey parents, welcome to Fulfillment Therapy. Do you want to raise your kids better and have a stronger marriage? Are you up late at night researching marriage and parenting tools and self-care tips? Do you start each day hoping for deeper connections and less chaos, but it ends with family arguments and going 12 different directions again? My name's Kendra, wife, mom, therapist, and growth enthusiast. It wasn't until I discovered how to fulfill my unmet needs that I was finally able to show up as my best self, as a spouse and parent. I realized that by meeting my needs, I could more fully meet the needs of my family with more energy and less resentment. In this podcast, I teach parents skills like boundary setting, prioritizing personal needs, communication, and claiming ownership. Just like my clients, you'll be shocked by the improvement in your marriage, parenting, and personal life when you focus on fulfilling your important, unmet needs. Ready to prioritize yourself so you can quit mentally throat-punching people? Then grab those earbuds and head outside, and let's walk and talk. Welcome back, my friends. Today, we are talking about marriage connection and how to navigate that conflict that arises in all of our relationships. I want to start by giving an analogy to help you understand what we're talking about today. Just imagine that your marriage is like a favorite old quilt. So you're mending the tears and you're strengthening the seams and making that blanket even cozier and warmer through all those extra patches. So when conflict arises, couples can bring forth understanding and empathy in order to mend those tears in the relationship. So if we have openness and humility, then those can be stitched to bring the couple even closer and to strengthen that favorite quilt. So hopefully (laughs) that analogy didn't confuse you at all with the quilt. I just want you to recognize that those tears don't have to be so devastating, and instead they can bring you closer. Because truly, in every relationship, there is conflict. It's just, what are we going to do about it? And that's what today is all about. I want to start with a story. Recently, a little self-disclosure here. I had a pretty distressing conflict with my husband. And upon reflecting on it, I think it was so hard for me this time. Because we were both very triggered. And another way to say that is we were both activated by something that stirred in us from earlier in life that was still a deep wound. I was actually quite surprised by how upset this made me. And in other situations, our repairs are pretty quick. But for this one, I've needed quite a bit more time because it's been really hard for me to understand the different layers of it and create greater self-awareness and try to identify how to prevent this cycle or this pattern from happening again. So today's episode is also for me to remember the steps that I can take to reconnect and to handle that wisely without ignoring my own needs in that process. Before we jump into the meat of it, I just want to quickly say that something big is coming so soon. Today we are at episode number 96, but for our 100th episode, there is going to be a lot of fantastic things happening. We're going to have giveaways, we're going to have a lot of surprises, we're going to have a lot of enormous amounts of laughter and tips that you will love. And I can't wait to share that with you. So stay tuned for that. 
Now on to the training and marriage repairs. How do you navigate conflict and strengthen bonds? Is this something that you've struggled with? Or maybe you've silently been carrying that, like not feeling very connected. Maybe you don't really know how to repair very well. So instead you just avoid and it's never really talked about and it just becomes bigger. Let's start with what marriage repairs are. Marriage repairs are essential steps in resolving those conflicts and maintaining that emotional connection. Are you emotionally connected with your spouse? And if not, it's likely that there's been conflict that hasn't been repaired. When you make repairs, that allows for a healthy, fulfilling relationship where both partners feel three things. They feel heard, they feel understood, and they feel supported. Now, I just want you to take a quick inventory. Think about the last argument you might have had with your spouse. Did you feel heard? Did you feel understood? Did you feel supported? And even more importantly right now, for the sake of this episode, did you offer them understanding and support? Did you hear them and validate them? Even if you didn't really agree with them, were you able to give them that? And if not, can you go make amends now? Maybe you still feel too activated and you don't feel like you're quite ready to do it in person without it escalating, but maybe it can be a simple text or a video message or an audio message. And I'll get into a few more tips in just a second. First, I want to help you understand what an effective repair attempt looks like. So a repair attempt in marriage is any action or even statement or something that's said that's aimed at resolving the conflict and soothing that emotional distress. So this is like a bid in the relationship. This could be something from hugs to a hand touch to a connected gaze to a smile, something that shows that humility and that unconditional love. I want a little disclaimer here. I mentioned this a second ago, but sometimes it doesn't feel genuine yet. You might not be ready and you might need a little more time to process so you can really feel humble. So give yourself the time and the space, but communicate that and don't use it as a weapon. And also, please, my friends, I see this a lot with clients. They say, oh, yeah, I put all these bids in. I do all these things. And then when I ask the spouse, like in marriage counseling, They say, I had no idea they were putting bids in. I had no idea they were trying to repair. It was way too subtle. So please, don't make it so subtle. And if they're struggling to recognize it, gently communicate how you have been trying to make those bids because it's important for you and those repairs. When you make repair attempts, what that does is it restores trust and intimacy and that emotional safety. And it also improves the resilience of the relationship. I often have clients tell me that after they have made repairs in the relationship sincerely and done well, then they have this big peak of connection because they feel so heard and so understood that it reignites that intimacy and that love and that deeper connection within them. And they're always amazed by it. And I just laugh and I think it's wonderful that They're able to see it and practice that more until it becomes their new pattern. Okay, now I want to talk about some common challenges or obstacles to having your repair be effective. You can use this as a quick assessment for yourself. When you recently argued or had that last fight, think about that example. Were you defensive? Were you blaming? Were you invalidating? Like, did you not validate their feelings, even if they were different from your own? If any of those are true, then this is another opportunity to go back and make repairs and humbly share your side of the street, what you could have done, and take some responsibility for that. Now I want to talk about triggers, because I feel like that is a big one for my clients and myself. If you can't recognize the triggers that you have, It's often difficult to work through those layers and create that self-awareness. I'm going to go a little deeper into the example from, from the argument my husband and I had. I was triggered because I needed help and I was on a timeline. I was trying to take two of my kids out on a date. 
and we were trying to catch a movie. And I needed something that I couldn't provide for myself. I needed quick help checking the oil, and I didn't have time to figure out some of the car issues that I was having. And I asked for quick help. Well, in that situation, the way that he responded was so triggering to me. Not even so much about what was happening in the moment, but it took me back to how I felt as an older child or a younger teen when I felt like I had very little control and I needed help and that person knew it and they used their power over me in an unhealthy way. And it just created this rage within me that was even surprising to myself because of that trigger. I've worked through a lot of them, but there's obviously still a deep wound there and that conflict largely occurred because of that trigger. And now that's not the only one because he was triggered on the other end as well. There was a reason that he responded with a desire to control or get his power back. And because we were both triggered with a very specific deep wound, this created a higher conflict than normal that took longer to repair from. I do also want to point out that if you have been with your spouse for a while, you can also have shared triggers. So in that case, sometimes for my husband and I, a shared trigger might be working together on something where there is a power differential. We both value autonomy. If that's not navigated very carefully, any power imbalance can be very triggering. Okay, so maybe you're aware of some of your triggers. Likely you're not aware of all of them. Very few people are. I would say no one is. But what can you do when you are triggered or you are activated? Often people need boundaries or tools for managing those intense emotions during conflicts. So explore after the fact when you're both calm what you both need to feel safe when things are really activated. For example, it could be, I need somewhere between 30 minutes and 24 hours, depending on how escalated that conflict is, but I need you to respect that need for time. And then when we come back together, if we can't have lowered voices and calmly talk about the problem and take ownership, then we need more time. Something like that. Or you could even have a script that you use. Like a few weeks ago, I had those tools that I mentioned, those five steps to healthy communication. Like you have to use that script every time you have a conflict so that you can make sure that the right steps are being addressed and there is more ownership. But yours might be different. Just explore that with your spouse. What it would take for you to both feel safe when there's conflict. All right, I also want to stress the importance of empathy and active listening because these two things will really de-escalate the tension and create more understanding and connection. And I'll go into those tips in another episode about how to become a better active listener and how to have greater empathy. All right, do you want a few tips for effective repairs? I think we all need them, right? I mentioned this one already, but this one is, the first one is, Take responsibility. Take ownership for your side of the street. I am not asking you to take ownership for theirs. And acknowledge how that impacted your spouse. The second one is apologize sincerely. If you're not sincerely apologizing, then there's not that empathy there, and it changes the tone and the atmosphere of that repair attempt. So validate the other person's feelings and express that remorse and share exactly what your plan is as you commit to change that pattern or that cycle. Number three, reconnect positively. Do you want to reestablish that emotional connection after repairs? Well, you can do that by words of affirmation. So express appreciation or do something together that is more connecting like physical activities often are, or things outside, or whatever they might be, their favorite hobbies, or whatever it is. And as much as you can, offer that affection, like lovingly looking at each other, holding each other, taking the time to come together again. And the fourth one, did I say there's going to be a fourth one? There's going to be a fourth one. (laughs) 
set boundaries. Again, this goes back to almost every episode. (laughs) Boundaries are so key to everything. You need to sit down and set boundaries together so that you can both feel safe and secure when there is conflict or even before there's conflict so that each person has their needs met. And in this way, there's mutual respect and understanding. Does that make sense? I'm going to role play a quick example. You could say something like, Hey, love, I really want to stop this pattern and the cycle that we have when we're activated by a power differential. And next time when we feel really triggered and activated, and we notice that our voices are being raised and that our body feels really tense, can we just have like a safe word? something that shares quickly that we just need some space and time, but we'll revisit this in like 24 hours. Like for example, maybe we could just say time out or even just say, let's pause. Can we please respect that need to back away from it until we can explore a little bit ourselves and come to a better understanding of why we were triggered and communicate more calmly together in ways that are effective and not so activated. I could also say something like, when we continue to communicate after we've both been triggered, it very quickly gets in this cycle where we are fault-finding and bringing up things in the past and making unfair accusations and making assumptions that make that rift even bigger, and it takes even longer to recover. Our relationship is really important to me, and I don't want to keep repeating that pattern. So if we could please practice this in honoring that need for that pause or that time out, and then promising each other that we'll come back within 24 hours, I think that would really help me. And then also when we come back, maybe we could use those five steps on effective communication. I will put those in the show notes again if you would like to print those out and use those to practice because they really are helpful when people are getting out of these unhealthy patterns. Anyway, that is just one potential conversation that you could have after the fact and before the next argument to practice breaking those unhealthy cycles that just keep repeating and repeating as you are triggered again and again by something historical. All right, I just want to end with three quotes from marriage experts. I use a lot of these quotes often in my couples counseling, and you may or may not have heard them before. The first one is by Dr. John Gottman. Effective repairs in marriage require humility, empathy, and a commitment to mutual growth. The next one is by Dr. Sue Johnson. Those two are both all over the place when it comes to marriage counseling or marriage advice. Navigating conflicts in marriage is not about avoiding triggers, but about learning to repair and reconnect with love and empathy, fostering deeper intimacy and connection. So she's saying exactly what I'm saying here. If you want to have deeper intimacy and connection, it's important to practice showing that love and that empathy, even though there's going to be triggers. And then the last one is, the true test of a marriage's strength lies not in the absence of conflict, but in the ability to repair and emerge stronger together, forging a deeper bond rooted in mutual respect and love. And that's by Dr. Michelle Weiner davis My friends, marriage repairs are so important in maintaining a strong and resilient relationship. But they are also a normal part of the human experience and vitally important, especially if you want to grow and connect and continue to thrive. When we practice effective repair attempts, we really will grow closer and have deeper intimacy, greater fulfillment and growth, and ultimately will strengthen our marriage bond that will also create a more fulfilling home life. These are all great reasons to work on these steps, aren't they? (laughs) So out of all of these things, I would say be empathetic, be humble, own your part, 
and use those five steps I'll include in the show notes that I've mentioned in previous episodes for effective communication. Best of luck to you using these tips and implementing them in your life and creating that deeper connection. I can't wait to hear your success stories. Until next time. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, chances are someone else would too. Would you take 30 seconds to share this with a friend who's looking for greater family fulfillment? And while you're sharing, tell me what you think about the show by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. It refuels me when I hear this podcast is helping you. No matter what your house or your hair looks like, I'll meet you back here every Monday and Thursday morning for more episodes. Until then!